Like a man of sophistication. <laughs> Nip, <Nee>, boy. Stand by and leave everything to me, okay? <laughs> oh. hey, excuse me, did a pair of goggles pass you in there? Yeah, it's just my luck. What a day I've had. I'm knackered, you know. I'm so, I've just carried my bike up six flights of stairs. <laughs> Couldn't you have left on the pavement? No bloody fear, you might have fell in tap <laughs> Anyway, we don't want to keep you here chatting. You might catch your death of call. Any time you're ready, on you go. Oh, jump, I'm not kidding. Ah, on I'm all. On I'm you all. I'll give you three, OK? <laughs> One, two... <laughs> what are you saying? Well, I was told to come here and talk him down off the ledge. That's what I did. He's been meant to talk him down off the ledge and back into the house. Go oh, back into the house. Oh, I just think we'll do A false alarm, Jimmy. Would you just hang on? I'll try not to keep you. How am I supposed to talk him down off the ledge and back into the house? Well, for a start, you can go out there onto the ledge with him and try to win his confidence. <laughs> oh, don't let me. <laughs> the name is Supercop, no Robocop. <laughs> I'm half duty, you see. I've had my mince and dough boys in the canteen and I'm on my way home. Who's <laughs> there in the list? What's wrong? Have you got vertigo? No, just up the road there. <laughs> Come on, officer. Do your duty. After all, you're used to dealing with psychopaths. No, no, you've got it wrong. You see, I'm a traffic police. I deal with psychopaths. <laughs> all right, hang on. I'll see what I can do. Oh, and I'll make you both a cup of tea. A ah, good idea. <laughs> oh, yeah. Stay back. Oh, yeah, come Don't on. come near me. Come on, now listen. Listen, just a minute now. Look, 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 look at the view you've got here. <laughs> Glasgow Airport over there. <laughs> See, that's a good job you're not jumping for there. I know. There's a three hour delay for takeoff. <laughs> oh, Chang's and look. 
There's the route taken by the Glasgow Snickers. Snickers? Ah, they changed the name for Marathon. <laughs> Yeah, look, there, there's George Square. George Square with all the lights on. Is that, is that no lovely, that? Mm. It's, it's remarkable to think that there was a time in history when that was the scene of the most inexorable horror and terror. Uh, it's when the government troops attacked the Clydesiders. No, last year's Hugmanay show. <laughs> <laughs> that is, what a view this is. What a real... Jinx! I don't believe that. What? Look, didn't it? <laughs> See, that was a fella back in a double yellow line. In fact, got his tax disc suit today. I just lost my mince and dough boy. <laughs> Stay away from me! You're using psychology! No, it's old space actually. <laughs> well, hello, work. I've got a suicide note and I'm going to sign it. Oh, don't sign. Don't, 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 don't sign. Why not? Until you've seen living design. <laughs> Well, you're oh, Here's your tea. Tea? How can I drink tea at a time like this? I'll take a cup if there's one gone. Oh, certainly, Willie. Pass that across to him, will you? Oh, for goodness sake. Call yourself an officer. I'll take it myself. Oh. oh. <laughs> another cup. <laughs> Hello? Oh, yes. Yes, he is here. Uh, hold on a minute, will you? Pass that across to him, will you? Would you know how to take it yourself? <laughs> Pass it across. <laughs> For you. For me? Ah. Oh, ah, uh, me? You're joking? No, no, thanks very much. No, thanks very much. The suicide's off. Oh, the suicide's off. Oh, thank God. She says, Oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, your beauty. He says, Oh, your beauty. Why? She wants to know why. My luck's changed. At last, I've got something to live for. I have just won a six weeks all expenses paid holiday for two in the Bahamas. No, oh, you lucky swine. <laughs> Who are you going with? London Polly. Get away. <laughs> uh, excuse me. But uh, as a supporter, do you feel there's too much commercialism in football? Uh, well, of course, I'm a St. Martin fan. Could you explain what football is? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, there we are. That wasn't too bad, was it? I must have a look at the highway code when I get home. I'm pretty sure a red light meant go. <laughs> I must say these new seat covers certainly help you relax. 
What do you think yourself, Sister Concepta? Do the beads help you? Definitely. <laughs> I use a phone card because it saves me carrying change. I use a phone card because I find it fits my purse perfectly. I use a phone card because I'm pissed. <laughs> Unemployment. Yes, I can tell you something about unemployment. I was a senior systems analyst before I was made redundant. I couldn't find employment for years. I felt useless, unwanted. Then, well, my luck changed. I'll tell you something. There is nothing like having a job or giving a man back his self-respect. Come in, come in, sit down. You're fired. No, no. Neil, Neil, come in, come in, sit down. Now, you've been with this company for 30 years, and you're fired. Come in. Hey, you wanted a word with me, JG? Ah, Neil, come in, come in, sit down. <laughs> You're uh, comfortable? Well, I, I don't know about comfortable. I have a few quid in the bank and the mortgage. <laughs> no, no. No you, Neil. The chair. Oh, the, oh, the chair. Yes, yes, it's fine. It's fine. Thank you. Neil, I'll come straight to the point. The team hasn't been doing well recently. Oh, so... I wouldn't say that, JG. I mean, they've qualified for Sweden, you know. <laughs> no, that team. Our team. Oh, I didn't know we had a football team. <laughs> How exciting. No, no, no football. Our company, our company hasn't been doing well, Neil. Basically, the problem's twofold. The recession and competition from the Far East. I don't need to tell you, it's a jungle out there. Oh, I know, I know. Especially in Borneo, it's all jungle out there. <laughs> no, no, you don't understand. We're going to have to cut back. Oh, would that not be detrimental to the environment? <laughs> what would? If you're cutting back the jungle. <laughs> no, no, forget the jungle. Forget the jungle, yes. yeah. No, Neil, what I'm trying to say to you is the management, after many, many sleepless nights, have decided to do something about it. And I think you can guess what. Count sheep. <laughs> what? Count sheep. It's a, a way of getting to sleep. <laughs> Although personally, I like a wee cup of Ovaltine at night. <laughs> no, 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 Neil. What they're going to do is they've decided that the labour force should be slimmed down. Oh, oh it's going to be yogurt and salad in the <laughs> No, 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 Neil. They're going to serve redundancy notices. <laughs> It's a funny thing to have on the menu. <laughs> Neil, just forget the canteen. Forget the canteen. What I'm saying is redundancy notices are being served on certain members of the staff by the board of directors. And, Neil, you're one of them. Well, I'm not one of the board of directors. <laughs> No, I, 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 actually, I'm in accounts. I've been Neil, there. would you try and understand what I'm trying to tell you? Our company is in severe financial difficulties. There are too many staff. Already the Dundee branch has had to close down. Neil, you'll have to go. <laughs> <coughs> but, uh... Why do I have to go to Dundee when the branch is closed? <laughs> no, you're not going to Dundee, Neil. Now, listen. Would you look at that? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, that tells its own story. All covered with nicotine. Not my finger! The envelope! How did the nicotine get on there? <laughs> Neil, get out of my office! Get out! I'll sack somebody else! <laughs> Perhaps this is 
one of the most amazing discoveries of the 20th century. An entire village where the people are living almost exactly as primitive man did thousands of years ago. I'll just have a word with one of the local inhabitants. Tell me, how long have you been living like this? <laughs> well, no, let's see. Uh, ever since the Western Isles Council put all our money into BCCI. <laughs> time in a week I have had to speak to you about this. You are setting a very bad example to the rest of the school. Now away you go home and change. You know perfectly well that black stockings are not acceptable garb for coming to school in. <laughs> Especially not for the senior science teacher. Right, where's your pass? Me hey, pass! Can I get in here the day without a pass? I would expect royalty. <laughs> 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 that, that, that. Where do you think you're going, son? Where's your pass? Me hey, pass, you can't come in here the day without a pass. I would expect the queen, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Right, where's your pass? <laughs> Hello, casualty? Yes. Ambulance for Davis. Yes, I'll tell him. Oh, it's fairly quiet in here tonight. Yes. Let's hope it stays that way. Bye. Magalanchi! You again. What's the story this time? Well, your consultants, eh? <laughs> Put it into medical terms, I am feeling bloody hellish. <laughs> and I think it might be fetal. <laughs> so, where's the pig? Uh, she's in the wheelchair. <laughs> Where did you get that? Picked her up at the dancer. <laughs> Not her, the wheelchair. Oh, the wheelchair. Oh, the wheelchair. Uh, well, as a matter of fact, we could have borrowed it off uh, an old fella in the Jerry Onimo war. Aye, but don't worry, Doctor. We left them well wrapped up in blankets. Ah, we shoved them down the laundry chute. <laughs> <laughs> you liked it, you liked it. Ah, look here, McGlinchey. Ah. These little visits of yours are becoming a regular occurrence. Ah. I seem to remember not long ago you came in claiming you had the Blackwater Fox. Oh, I was very bad. Yes, well, that's only something you can get in wild jungle areas far from civilization. Oh, you've been to Springburn. <laughs> And then you claimed you had the bubonic plague. Uh, uh, and the time before that, you insisted you had a strangulated hernia. Well, I don't have a strangulated hernia. In the knee? <laughs> McGlinchey, you're a time waster. Have you never heard of hospital cuts? Oh, listen, you don't need to tell me about hospital cuts. Do I know about hospital cuts? Last time I was in here, I had a Vaseline to me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want it, but they gave it to me anyway. I see, willy-nilly. Exactly. <laughs> I can vouch for that. <laughs> now, look here, McGlinchey. I don't know what your game is, but every time it's raining out there, you seem to be in here. Now, I'm a very busy man, so if you've got something wrong with you, spit it out. Well, I mean, I'm no doctor, you understand, but I do watch casualty every week. <laughs> and it would be my dialysis, I speak, of course, as a complete layabout, <laughs> that I have possibly got neurosis of the liver. <laughs> and are you taking anything for it? Just some pills. How many? Oh, maybe a couple of dozen cans. <laughs> Good morning.
morning, madam. I'm from the council planning department, and I've come to ask you to remove that big, ugly dish from the front of your house. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, Tom! <laughs> You've got to get your face out the living room window. <laughs> Nothing but rubbish. I'll tell you this. The programmes on this new television are no near as good as the ones we used to get in the old gym. <laughs> but you had to have this one, didn't you? Oh, yes. You had to have the one with a gadget. Well, this is a brilliant gadget, this. Do you realise that with this gadget, I can make it brighter, I can make it darker, I can put the volume up, I can put the volume down, or I can cut the sound all together. All without touching the telly. Well, hurry up and use it then. This is minging. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like me to change the channel? Aye. Right, hang go. God, it's a rare gadget, that, eh? <laughs> a real labour-saving device, that. <laughs> oh, no, Twin Creeks. Oh, no, I can't bear that programme. Turn it over. Uh, Turn it over. Well, where, where did I leave the... Oh, God, I've left it on the telly. Yeah, I left it there for handiness. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what would be a, a good invention? A remote control to work your remote control. <laughs> when you forget that you've left it on the telly. <laughs> I like those. Do you think you can get the other yeah. for your son? I didn't do it. I didn't yeah. murder no one. Oh, no, we're back where we started. I hate this program as well. Well, I'm sorry, there are only four channels. Well, how come the buttons on that thing go up to 16 then? Well, that's in case you get one of these satellite things and, and you get Sky Television. What's Sky Television? It's a programme that comes with Port Tree. <laughs> <laughs> you knew this would happen, didn't you? You knew the television would be rotten tonight. We should have had a vigil. I've told you before I will not put out good money hiring a vigil cassette. <laughs> How no? Because we haven't got a vigil recorder. Right? <laughs> you are so unreasonable at times, honestly. Oh, but that is just typical of you, isn't it? Oh, yes, everything's got to be done to suit you, Mr. High Tech. An ordinary telly's no good enough for you. Oh, no, you've got to have the one with a gadget, just so that you can change everything with... <laughs> <laughs> Do you suffer from hernia? <laughs> and what's worse, suffer alone? Why not seek the help of an association formed to succour hernia sufferers? <laughs> Join us at the OYAH. That is the Open Youth Association for Hernia. <laughs> or, as it is sometimes known, Oya. <laughs> <laughs> we meet every Ash Wednesday <laughs> in the small hall, Achaltubui. <laughs> Here you can meet people similarly afflicted and sit or stand, <laughs> whichever is more comfortable, and suffer with them in silence and be treated with kindness, understanding, and a much needed support. <laughs> <laughs> Write to us now at the small hall, Achaltubui, Wester Ross, or telephone us at Achaltubui, O O O O O. <laughs> You need not give your name, and you may be eligible for a Community Action Trust Award. <laughs> Don't you just love being in control?
Why are you crying, Scarlet? You know Al walked down the aisle with you. Oh, fiddly dee, Ashley Wilkes. You could never be my husband. You can never measure up to Rhett Butler. He knew how to treat a lady. Why, when I think of him, all I can see is a perfect, well-mannered, cultured southern gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> but... <laughs> I guess that's why they call it Gone with the Wind. Oh, Ray, I can't believe it's you. Oh, Scarlet. Come over here and let these strong hands do what they must. Butler, you've come back, have you? I always knew you would. I suppose the people in the north rejected you, and you've had to come south to make a living. Well, why not? It worked for Teddy Taylor. <laughs> Rat, I've just been telling Ashley what a perfect, well-mannered, cultured southern gentleman you are. <laughs> why, you're no southern gentleman. I shouldn't think you've ever been to Texas. You're absolutely right, Ashley. I always go to B&Q. <laughs> and now, after all this time, you've come back, thinking you'll just take over where you left off, hmm? Do you, Rat? Well, you reckoned without Ashley Wilkes. When I was younger, I was a real kamikaze nutter. They used to call me Tora, Tora, Tora Ashley. You sure it wasn't Laura, Laura, Laura? <laughs> oh, boys! Why, there's no need to fight over me. Oh, what choice have I got, Scarlet? When I came through that door there and I saw you standing there, you, you looked so pretty. All I could think of was all them nights when we used to dance all night at those big society... Uh, society... Balls. Don't you, you can't talk to me like that. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. No, you can't. No, you can't. Why don't you settle this like real men? That's a good idea, Scarlet. I'll get the Scrabble. <laughs> oh, I mean with these. What? You mean take the pistol? No, I think she's serious. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Why, Red, what's wrong? Oh, it's it's just a wound I I got while I was trying to escape from the Confederate Army during this terrible civil war. I had to jump over a barbed wire fence. And what happened? I got caught by the Yankees. <laughs> Why did you stand and face me like a real man, Red Butler? Very well, Ashley. <laughs> if that's the way it's got to be. Hmm? <laughs> I just want you to know I, I always loved you, Scarlet. And I always loved you too, Rhett. And I always loved you too, Rhett. <laughs> She never loved you, Rhett. Yes, I did, Rhett. And to prove it, I've left everything I have to you in my will. Everything, Scarlet? Everything. Well, in that case... <laughs> now, what was that you were saying? Oh, uh, what are we going to do about Scarlet? 
Frankly, my dear, I don't give a dram. Morning, sir. Sergeant. Sir, I think we've got a wee problem with this merging of the regiments. Really, Sergeant? What's that? Gary Armstrong was going to take the top one. David Scholl has uh, asked Gavin Hastings if he wants to have a lick at it. But having nominated the penalty, of course, they then have to kick the penalty. You can't do anything fancy like a tap kick or anything like that. That's one of the uh, new laws this season, that you can use sand for, uh, for a tee. I'm uh, not much in favour of it, but most groundsmen are, because, of course, it does save the pitch from being hacked at. <laughs> My God, does the time pass awful quick. You know, one year it's springtime, the new leaves are on the trees, and then the next it's autumn again. Aye. You hardly have time to draw breath from one year to the next. Oh, it's true, it's true. And have you noticed that as we get older, the polis seem to be getting younger? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Quick, a single to Edinburgh, please. Train's off. <laughs> train's off? Uh, well, give me a single to Stirling and I'll get a bus. Stirling train's off, and the Largs train's off, and the Aberdeen train's off. In fact, every bloody train's off. But I'm... Off, off, off. Capiche? Off. No on, but ah. No late, no delay, no cancel because of signal failure at Haymarket. No late arrival of staff, no cutbacks, just ah. Completely and utterly, no chance of being on. Just definitely, categorically and absolutely, O F F ah. Everything's ah. What are you doing here? What do you think? I'm public relations. <laughs> Morag, would you send the next one in, please? <laughs> you must be Mr. Spock. Uh, that's correct, yeah. F.O. Uh, oh, well, stick it up. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. F.O. First Officer. Oh, aye, aye, correct, correct. Listen, I hope you don't mind me mentioning this, but see these sliding doors at the front there? Well, I mean, I'm usually beamed up and doing everywhere, so I'm quite used to having my molecules rearranged. But getting them caught between sliding <laughs> doors and... <laughs> oh, um, we'll just get some background details. Um, what school did you go to? School? Will that affect my job prospects? <laughs> what do you think so? No. Well, I went to a... Uh, I went to St. Androids of the Immaculate Ignition. <laughs> yes, well, it might. So, you're looking for a job? I'm looking for a job. Yes, yeah. well, what can I offer you? I can offer you a job behind the ladies' lingerie counter at Fraser's. <laughs> ladies' lingerie? Yes. Oh, so you're asking me to boldly go if we have no minors ever. <laughs> oh, there's a job as a stand-in for Archie McPherson. Oh. Now you're asking me to boldly go over here. <laughs> yes, well, I don't know what to suggest. Uh, there's a limited season here uh, at the Gaiety Govan, uh -huh. a part in a pantomime. Oh, pantomime. Oh, yes. that would be nice. Big Ears meets Noddy. <laughs> Big Ears? <laughs> Big Ears meets Noddy? Yes. Well, I'm nothing like Noddy. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have nothing for you. You look stupid. You're completely out of touch with reality. You'll be living on another planet. Oh, you're quite right. I mean, what other kind of job could I get? Uh, excuse me, do you have anyone who could make a good Scottish Tory party chairman? A new litre size, uh, two crates of vodka, a crate of Bacardi, a shelf full of lager. Oh, I'm going to need some export. Just give us that display there. Is that you then? Aye. No. 
You better give us a bottle of Ezek. Just in case I get any visitors. Oh, Sammy, how's it going, then? Jimmy! Can I join you? Oh, we sit down. Ah. Oh, all oh, the best, by the way. Happy New Year, Jimmy. Uh -huh. Happy. What's that new year did you have? Ah, I spent it up at my granny's. Oh, I how did it go? Well, <laughs> my granny got her false teeth stuck in a bit of black bun she was eating, you see. So my granddad, he found the black bun with a false teeth, only he said they were his. So a wee strum I starts up, you see. So my uncle, he steps in to sort it out. Unfortunately, my auntie, she gubs my uncle for starting a fight. So, in self-defence, my uncle, he picks up my auntie, throws her through the windy. Fortunately, the windy was open, but unfortunately, she landed and tapped a police car that happened to be passing it off. Anyway, while all this is going on, there's a chip fan went to fire in the kitchen. So somebody phones for a fire brigade. You know, on the road drew to my granny's, you know, the fire brigade runs into an ambulance, it's been called, because remember, my auntie fell and tapped a police car. So there you go, there's fire bells going, there's ambulance hooters, there's police sounds, and next thing you know, the fire brigade are up, they've flooded the flat with water, the police have run up and done us off for a breach of the peace. Uh, I had a kind of quiet night myself. <laughs> suffer from <laughs> loss of memory. <laughs> Is there anything worse than when you can't think of the, 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 uh, the, uh, you know, the, 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 what do you call it? The, the, the thing you say, what, what do you call the thing you the, uh, the word, that's it, the word. Anyway, it can be very upsetting. It's like, it's just, it's just like, what's it like now? It's, uh, <laughs> well, uh, what was I saying there? <laughs> uh, well, if, if you need, if ever you need a, a sympathetic, uh, a, a sympathetic, uh, you know, thing, mate, uh, you, you just telephone us on, uh, on, uh, <laughs> on, on Wednesday. <laughs> Now, wait a minute, you better not make it Wednesday. <laughs> I, that's the bull's night, you see. <laughs> or is it the darts? <laughs> what day is this? <laughs> hey, listen, you, you'd, be, you'd be just as well to come along yourself, you know. You'll, you'll find us at... You'll, you'll find... You'll, well, you can ask somebody and they'll tell you. <laughs> come along any night and, and ask for me. My, my name is... My, my name's... Uh, my, my name's... Uh, Heavy worsted. <laughs> just, just you ask for heavy worsted, and, I, and I'll see you right. I'm the therapist. Oh well, there's the bells. Us. Yes. Yeah. The year of culture's finished. Ah, thank God. Now we can get back to normal. <laughs> okay, Stalin. scared the shot of me. <laughs> when? Well, I know, when I was playing the... No! Old... 
When are you going to keep your promise and make me a star? Oh, I, oh, oh that, that when, I. Well, it hasn't been easy since they took off Opportunity Knocks, you know what I mean? Please, I can't take any more of your half-baked excuses. Half-baked? I beg your pardon. The phantom of the opera never does things by halves. Except maybe when I'm shaving. <laughs> How could I have been so stupid? You make me a star. What's so stupid about that? You couldn't have had a better teacher. Look at all the famous people of what I have teached. <laughs> Good heavens, they've all been there. Oh, what about, what about uh, Mario Lanza, that lovely Irish lassie? Daughter <laughs> <laughs> ever since you knew it. And, and, and Pavarotti, Big Luciano, he was doing here. Big Luciano was here, he was stunning. Right where the both of us are stunning now. <laughs> you, know, you know his big hit, Nessun Dorma? I taught him the Scottish version. Nay, Messon Norma. Well, I'm sorry, but I can't take any more of it. I can't take the broken promises. I can't take the disappointments. Most of all, I can't bear the awful scrab, scrab, scrabbling of the rats. Oh, he certainly right. That's the flaming ninja turtle. <laughs> Yeah. Why? You ask the phantom, why? Why does he prefer to put up with this parlous pit of putrefaction? <laughs> <laughs> to paddle in pools of pungency and play out this, this pathetic pantomime. Actually, I'm doing here dodging the pole time. <laughs> Are you sure your decision to live here has nothing to do with... with your face? Ah! <laughs> My face? How did you guess? The mask. What mask? <laughs> well, that, well, that's ma the mask that's masking my fazog. Oh, I hate this mask. <laughs> See, this mask, I hate it. I mean, you can't pick your nose nor nothing. <laughs> but, I mean, it's nothing serious. It's just one or two wee plukes. <laughs> well, if that's all that it is, why don't you take the mask off? No. No, I just put a fresh poultice on this morning. <laughs> oh, please. All this time, and I have never seen your face. Please, I beg of you, I implore you, these a deck at your coupon. <laughs> well, I mean, if, you, if you're going to put it like that. I don't care what you look like. Don't you realise what has happened? What? I have grown to love you. Love? And my love will not see the ugliness that is in your face, but the beauty that lies within your soul. Oh, well, if you put it like that. be as bad as I. <laughs> hell, sir. Darling, doll. <laughs> all right, wait to hell. <laughs> you don't want to be a star, then that's all right by me. What the hell are you staring at? <laughs> I have my son. He is going to be a great star. He has the greatest singing voice the world has ever known. Are you there, Junior? <laughs> ah, my son. My son. You and I will show the world what music really is. How long have we been here now? Five hours. Five hours. Right. Here's the squad. McAllister. Go. McCoy's. <laughs> My God, 
that man drowning. Why don't you help him? It's Chick Young from Sports Scene. <laughs> <laughs> Rangers season ticket, please. Oh, yes, sir. Television licenses, next counter. <laughs> <laughs> Do you suffer from flatulence? <laughs> Do you find it difficult to make friends? <laughs> Are you hard put to it to keep things to yourself? <laughs> Do you feel it has been going on far too long? <laughs> Do sudden, unexpected outbursts create a bad atmosphere? <laughs> Do people walk away when you appear? <laughs> Are there times when even you walk away? <laughs> We are a self-help group called Flatulence Aid, Resource and Treatment, or F-A-R-T. <laughs> we are fellow sufferers who hold meetings on high ground during strong winds and gain relief by sharing experiences in the open air. Phone us at... 08 08 40 40 40 <laughs> or write to Alma Shorthouse F A R T 1298 Belter Street <laughs> Hartburn In case of emergency you are welcome to call in person our door is always open. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I'm from the BBC. I wonder if you'd mind answering a simple question. Do you have any reservations about Mr. Kinnock's projected apostasy, perceiving it perhaps as a blatant political expedient for the purposes of achieving a socialist hegemony? Or does the revelation of his terse driver session strike you as sufficiently voracious as to move you to embrace the creed of the new left? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, there's, uh, there's no uh, simplistic answer to a thing like that, you see. I mean, one has uh, so many factors that have to be considered in a, a matter. Well, we are very lucky. We've got a very good factor where we are. You know. <laughs> but uh, the fact is, I, I own my own uh, house, you see, and I was very lucky because it was a listed building listed for demolition but the thing <laughs> I feel is if where you have the uh, parameters surrounding the ergonomics of a demographic situation whereby if, if the parameters are no parallel you know the rope at the one end or the dog's <laughs> you just don't know where you are because the, the meaningful thing that one has always to remember in situations like these is that those of us who care deeply for a particular uh, creed or philosophy or, or even a, a dug at the greyhound. <laughs> you have to perceive of a, of a, of a, of a... <laughs> what was the question again? <laughs> Do you have any reservations about Mr. Kinnock's projected apostasy, perceiving it perhaps as a blatant political expedient for the purposes of achieving a socialist hegemony? Or does the revelation of his terse gyrosation strike you as sufficiently voracious as to move you to embrace the new creed of the left? No. <laughs> oh, yo, I give you five, I give you ten, I give you plastic. Right, yo, ho, I give you personalized pen, I give you poly bag, I give you calculator. Right, ho, yo, I give you... There. Just going to open a seat. <laughs> What will I do when I'm released from prison? Well, after the money for my painting exhibition comes through, I'm hoping that the advanced royalties in my poetry anthology will allow me to start a film adaptation of my latest book. There he is. What's it called? Crime Doesn't Pay. <laughs> I 
I've had a wonderful experience in expressive vision. I had these new glasses made in under an hour. <laughs> this is the one o'clock news from the BBC with Watty Burke. Hello, good afternoon. The BBC has strongly denied further claims from the Conservative Party that their coverage of the political scene is biased. In a statement issued today, a spokeswoman declared that those concerned with news and current affairs may hold their own political views, but they, and most especially those whose responsibility it is to read the news, <laughs> would never, under any circumstances, reveal any personal prejudice. In a heated exchange today, Labour leader Neil Kinnock <laughs> said that the Labour Party had had another leak. Mr. Ted Heath. He said that he had the same problem but took pills for it. Leader of the SDL, uh, the, uh, the, S, the SD, the, the P, became Paddy Ashdown, <laughs> said he could confirm that there had been leaks on his side of the house, and as evidence pointed to several puddles on the floor. <laughs> Michael Foote refused to comment. <laughs> Shadow Trade and Industry Minister, Mr. Gordon Brown, <laughs> insisted that the country was still <laughs> in recession. <laughs> In reply, Chancellor Norman Lamont <laughs> declared emphatically, "'Tisn't." <laughs> Shadow Scottish Secretary Donald Dewar, in a fiery speech, said, "'Um." <laughs> several times. West Lothian MP, Mr. Tam Diel, <laughs> Interrupted to ask why the Belgrano had been sunk. <laughs> Mr. Michael Hesseltine uh, uh, was so infuriated that he threw Mr. Colin Moynihan at him. <laughs> Deputy Leader, Leader, De oh, sorry, I'll read that again. Deputy Labour leader, Roy Hattersley, leapt to his feet to say... <laughs> the deputy speaker said she would accept a cup of coffee when it was ready. <laughs> Mr. Hattersley became so impassioned at this that he inadvertently broke wind. <laughs> Mrs. Thatcher declared it was the best speech Mr. Hattersley had ever made. <laughs> the Prime Minister, Mr. John Major, <laughs> thought that enough was enough and proposed a recess to allow the air to clear. <laughs> and that was the one o'clock news. Oh, here's a bit of late news just come in. The BBC regrets to announce the imminent departure of that well-loved newsreader, Mr. Watty Burke. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> well, a quiet start to the day for most of us tomorrow. There'll be clear skies above Glasgow until about mid-morning when it will be hit by a massive meteorite. <laughs> there are going to be short waves from this, and I think we could well see some earthquakes in Lanarkshire. So, an unsettled start to the day there. <laughs> Towards mid-morning, the Earth's crust will split wide open, and much of the northwest of Scotland will disappear into the sea. <laughs> So a wet day in prospect there. <laughs> Orkney will be partially swallowed, leaving Kirkwall. Cromarty will largely disappear, leaving Dingwall. And Rockall will disappear, leaving... 
not very much to speak of. <laughs> Moving to central regions now, and about lunchtime, I think we can expect to see a massive volcanic eruption in the Cairngorms. So it could be pleasantly warm there for a time. <laughs> Things will soon change, though, as clouds of volcanic ash and dust spread across the country, blotting out the sun and leading to a new ice age. So a wee tip for gardeners, don't put your geraniums out just yet. <laughs> Most of southern Scotland will have trouble from the big freeze, while northern Scotland will be troubled by the wee freeze as usual. <laughs> Towards late afternoon, Kilmarnock will be hit by the full force of Hurricane Senga. <laughs> and about five minutes later, Edinburgh will be hit by the full force of Kilmarnock. <laughs> Kirkcaldy will be visited by a plague of frogs. Pitt and Wheam will be visited by a plague of locusts. And even worse, Blair Gowrie will be visited by Jimmy McGregor. <laughs> I'll leave you with tomorrow's summary chat. Two hot water bottles you put in the bed have got cold. Get your hands off my bum. <laughs> I didn't know you had dandruff. I didn't know you had stitches. <laughs> Have you got one of these? I think so. <laughs> no, I mean, have you got a decent one? Oh, aye, aye, aye. What's it for? It's for an old bike that I'm building in the shed. Oh. My grandfather left me his will. <laughs> Your grandfather left you a shed in his will. <laughs> no, he left me an old bicycle in his will. Why well, he left it all? It's in a terrible state. Will it be legal then? What? The will. <laughs> if, it's in a, if it's in a terrible state, it might not be legal. You know. It's not a will. It's a bicycle. It's in a terrible state. Oh, it's a bike, it's a bike. Aye. It's a bike. So, have you got one of these? Ah, I've got one of these. <laughs> one of the other ones as well. No, no, a finger, a crank. Have you got a crank? Oh, a crank. Ah, well, wait, we'll have a look, eh? My grandfather was a champion bicyclist. He, he won a British Empire medal for it. No. King George gave him it. Did you know him? <laughs> no, we don't get many kings in here. <laughs> oh, who's the king? My grandfather. Oh, your grandfather. Was well, he a, a kind of tall man with a, a, a big bushy white beard and a kind of stoop? Aye. No, I never knew him. <laughs> I've never been in a bike before. So... I suppose I'll get a sore bum. But once I've painted it sky blue, I'm going to do a squat. What the hell do you want to do that? See what? Paint your bum sky blue. I'm not going to paint my bum sky blue. Oh, what colour are you going to paint? I'm not going to paint it any colour. It's a bite. It's a bite, I'm going to paint sky blue. Oh, there you are. That is the last one in the show. What do you want for it? Oh, I'd want 2,000 for the fixtures and fittings. <laughs> Maybe something for the goodwill. No, 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 the show. A crank. What do you want for a crank? Oh, a crank. Ah, well, make us an offer. I'll give you a fiver. Ah. That is very dirty. 
Oh, I don't want any dirty fibers. <laughs> you know that a clean one? No. I bought a clean tanner. Well, that'll do then. <laughs> like the uh, clean fiber and cheese. Here's your tanner. Here's your fiber. Here's your crank. And there's yours. Thanks very much. <laughs> Oh dear, dear. <laughs> uh, this is how they crush the grapes in the south of France. This is what you have today if you want to get every little drop of alcohol out. So come on, get crushing. <laughs> Next case. Call Aloysius McGlinchey. Call Aloysius McGlinchey. the dry boat there. You are Aloysius Elton McGlinchey. I refuse to answer that question on the grounds that might intimidate myself. <laughs> you were charged that on the afternoon of the 12th of October, during a friendly match between Patrick Thistle and Internationale Rachel, <laughs> that you did with malice aforethought strike a Patrick Thistle player with a projectile. Ah, well, it wasn't a projectile, it was a pie. <laughs> It's a pie, a fur hill pie. <laughs> or is it sometimes known a Jerry McNee? Why would a pie be known as a Jerry McNee? Because they're both full of mints. <laughs> Simple terms, Your Honour, the accused hit a footballer with a fir hill pie. The charge is therefore assault with a deadly weapon. <laughs> and we don't talk rubbish. If I'd wanted to hurt the man, I wouldn't have thrown the pie at him. I would have made him eat it. <laughs> Could we please just get on with this, please? Very good, Your Honour. Uh, Mr. McGlinchey, where are your briefs? They're inside my trouser. <laughs> No, no, I mean, where is your lawyer? Oh, my lawyer? Well, as a matter of fact, I was unable to procure the services of an advocate, <laughs> seeing as how I had not applied for Lucas aid. <laughs> so I, I thought maybe if it was all right for you, to, I, uh, I might conduct my own offence. Your Honour, this is ludicrous. It is obvious that the accused is incapable of conducting his own defence. Uh, just a minute, you. Are you trying to make me out to be no compost mental or something? <laughs> I know what I'm doing, I know what I'm doing. I watch LA Law. <laughs> and in my opening pattern, Your Lordship, I will expose a dross mismanagement of jaundice. <laughs> and before I leave this court, I will have proved my impotence. <laughs> Your Honour, I object. Overruled. Ah, there you go, you barrister. <laughs> <laughs> you carry on, McGlinchey. <laughs> this I must see. Well, uh, first things first, uh, Your Worship. Uh, I swear blind to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing like the truth to help a boat. <laughs> now, we'll start with you, you smart barrister. <laughs> Just what evidence do you have that I flung a pastry container of mutting at a Fir Hill player? I have three eyewitnesses. Three? 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 Do you mean to tell me the whole of the, the Patrick Thistle supporters coming against you? <laughs> All right. Your Worship, in that case, I propose to call a character witness. Call the wife. Call the wife. <laughs> Get your paws off me, I'm <laughs> So 
some check, eh? <laughs> Did you shout at us, McGlinchy? Aye, I did, doll. In there. Right, now stand up there and shut your face. <laughs> Could you give your name, please? McGlinchy. First name? Mrs. <laughs> right, old doll. You are to be my character witness. Mine? Oh, oh, ah. aye, OK, aye. on you go. I testify that my husband is a hell of a character. So he is, your worship. <laughs> hey, that's enough, beat it. Hey, hey, you promised me a fiver for doing that. Oh, because they don't tell everybody. May I remind you that this is a court of law and not grab a granny night at Tiffany's. I will have you, sonny boy. Where's my chib? <laughs> Right, 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 Okay, so maybe I wandered off the street and narrowed down again and committed crimes, but maybe I'm ashamed of being caught every time. <laughs> but I believe in, in British justice, innocent until framed guilty. <laughs> but however, if, if it means back to incarceration, back to being the bird man of Falca Seltzer, <laughs> so be it. All I could say is it's a tragic fate to befall a man who is nothing more or less than a victim of circumcision. <laughs> <laughs> that is my case. Aloysius McGlinchey, you may go. Oh, you beauty! Oh, cry freedom, you bastard! <laughs> <laughs> no hard feelings, you fiscal. You'll be back. I'll get you sooner or later. Listen, tell me if you don't mind. Just what made you think that I could throw this pie here 30 feet and hit an intended target? Just call it intuition. Oh. Mm. Well, just for the record and just between you and me, I didn't do that. Oh. And what did you do? This. <laughs> uh, excuse me, do you do home delivery? Yes. Could you see a subtler road there? <laughs> again, ready to enter this temporal gate we call New Year, eyes on a new and distant horizon, ready to face whatever challenges life has to offer, our heads held high and our hearts full of hope. What a load of sheer love. <laughs> it's freezing cold, lashing the rain, howling winds, and there's nothing but Gallic on the telly. <laughs> In any case, most of us will be 
past caring <laughs> a couple of hours. We had a break-in at the manse on Christmas Eve. There's been quite a few recently, and the police have this description of somebody with low self-esteem and whose dreams and ambitions have never been fulfilled. <laughs> sort of half-man, half-partic thistle support. <laughs> Well, what's worrying the neighbours is that if he's disturbed, he usually makes mad, passionate love to his victims, no matter what sex they are. <laughs> so if Easy and I have been taking it in turns to stay in it now. <laughs> As luck would have it, of course, we were burgled when we were both out. It was awful. All our beautifully gift-wrapped presents were stolen along with the Christmas tree and the fairy light. Then on Boxing Day, the burglar broke in again and brought back the Christmas tree and the fairy light. <laughs> Obviously, he couldn't get them to work either. <laughs> I'd given Ephesia some lovely toilet soap. It was that soap you get for body odour. Oh, marvellous stuff it was. In less than three days, you could smell it a mile away. <laughs> She gave me some recycled toilet water. She's very conscious of the environment. Well, you have to be when you take up so much of it. <laughs> she gave me a black and decker drill as well and invited me to bore the wall for a change. <laughs> ah, well, I don't suppose I should let it upset me. So many great religious men have suffered. Probably the greatest martyr was Job, who maintained his faith in spite of terrible affliction. He was the biggest family business in the land of us. It was known as the local Job Center. <laughs> but he lost everything. And three of his friends came to comfort him. They were the original Job's comforters. <laughs> I always used to think it was a wee woolly warmer he wore. You've got to be careful how you say that. <laughs> anyway, these friends came, they sat on the ground, they raised their voices and wept and threw dust and stew over their heads. Then they sat with them for seven days without speaking. And why? Because their mouths were too full of stew. <laughs> seven days they couldn't speak. I think I know what to get Ephesia for her birthday. Woman. Sir James, Nas Baxter comes from Glasgow. Tongs your back. <laughs> 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 